we have some guests in the audience, and we're excited to uh, see their presentation. Calling up um, from St. Bernard's School, uh, both the Sonics and the Swagonators. Well, I think the Sonics are so the Sonics are making the presentation, right? And Michelle Lavoie, yes. coach mentor, come on up, Michelle, and whoever else from your team. And the Sonics participated in the first LEGO League robotics program. And I'm not going to spoil any of the other news and leave that up to you. They present over here. They sure can. Yes. There's a handheld microphone on the table and a second one with our town clerk if a microphone is needed. It helps with Enfield Television. They're going to be switching speakers quite a bit, so everybody speak nice and loud, please. This is the St. Bernard Sonics first LEGO League team from St. Bernard School. Their challenge in first LEGO League this year was trash, and they needed to come up with a real-world problem and a solution to it, and I'm going to let them tell you about that tonight. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Sarah. Our school has been doing FLL for a few years now. Our Sonics team is all rookies. The trash item that we picked for this year's trash trick challenge is the small one pound steel propane tanks that campers use. This is what the tanks look like, but today we're using plastic water bottles instead of the propane tanks because that's safer. It is estimated that nearly 60 million of these tanks are used in the U.S. every year. Because they are so hard to recycle, most of them end up in landfills, taking up about 15 million cubic feet of space. If those tanks could be recycled properly, those tanks would provide enough recycled steel to make about 12,000 cars. This is a big problem, and we found a solution. Watch our skit to learn more. Scene 1 at a campground. Come on, Zach, let's go for a walk. Okay, let's go. Hey, Zach, do you see that propane tank lying on the ground? Yes, what should we do with it? Throw it in fire! Okay. No. no. Yes. yes. No. Too late. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Kaboom! <laughs> this is not a solution. The problem with this is that propane tanks can explode under extreme heat. They could have taken it home and given it to someone who knows how to properly dispose of it. Scene two, at an imaginary home, and then at a trashed energy plant. What should we do with this propane tank? What tank? The one we took on our last camping trip. Throw it in the garbage. I thought we weren't supposed to throw propane tanks in the garbage. Says who? Our research for the Sonics. Then why don't we just refill it for our next camping trip? We can't. It's illegal to refill these small tanks. Does one tank matter? Besides, the town and the fire department only accept the big 20 pound tanks. I can't keep this forever. I'm throwing it away. Oh no, you don't. Too late. <laughs> Meanwhile, I trashed the energy plant. Who wouldn't know better to put a propane tank in the garbage or recycle bin? People are too lazy these days. Very few places recycling, we know, because it's hard to ensure that the tanks are completely empty and safe to crush for the steel recyclers. Yeah, we've checked everywhere. People don't know what else to do with them. If we put it in the compactor, it'll explode. What should we do with it? Come on, work is over. Let's go home. Okay, we'll just leave it. The problem with putting a propane tank in the trash is that it can get crushed and blow up under extreme pressure. The compactor is a good example. If you put it in the trash, it could hurt our trash and recycling workers. Please keep that in mind and never throw these tanks away. Scene 3 at a Sonics FLO meeting. our town to buy the propane butter recycler. Me too. This machine is amazing. You put, you put, you, you put the used propane bottle into the machine and it sucks out all the leftover propane, which makes the bottle safe to puncture and crush. And the crushed tank, the crushed tanks are stored in the machine and it's full. Then the town employees can take the crushed metal to a steel recycling plant and get paid for it. Glad the inventors of this machine, Brad Fermate and Wayne Wilson, were willing to be our partners in this project. 
Mr. Freeman gave us all the information we need to convince our town that a propane battery recycler was a good investment. It's a great investment, and no other town has one of these machines. This machine is only being used in a few places right now in the country, like in national parks and Yel like Yellowstone. Did you know this machine can cost between ten and sixty thousand dollars? Because depending on the size of the recycler. Yeah, we thought it might be hard to convince our town to buy one of these machines, to buy, to, to buy it because of the cost. But then our other expert, Mr. Paul Kelly from the Public Works Department, suggested applying for a state grant and making it a regional project. And people who would be able to take propane tanks from towns all over Northern Connecticut and the money they'll make from the recycled steel would pay off the machine faster than they ever expected. And when it's paid off, all of the recycled steel will be a profit for the town. We should help advertise this. Let's hang up posters around the town so people know about the propane bottle recycler. If they have an easier way to recycle these bottles, they're more likely to do it. Yeah, and we can make things a lot safer for our public works employees. We should also tell local campgrounds about this. People will do the right thing when they hear about this. Think about all the propane tanks that will be turned into new steel products instead of sitting in landfills. It's pretty cool knowing that we made a big can make a big difference to our environment. Yeah! <laughs> can you help us make a difference? You each have a summary of our information on propane bottle recyclers and the contact information for Mr. Brad Firmright. We would like to propose that and build and invest in one of these machines to help everyone in our regional properly recycle small propane tanks. With your help, our FLL project solution could become a reality for Enfield. Do you have any questions for us? All right. <laughs> See, it's a force of habit. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, first of all, awesome job. So if, if there's questions from the council, then we would ask you, whoever's going to answer, um, can use the handheld, just uh, turn it on. Um, but questions, comments from the council? Bill, you um, were the organizer to, to bring them to uh, the council this evening. Any comments or questions from you first? I, I've actually had the honor of, of seeing them present this um, presentation a couple times over the season. Um, with uh, along with the Swagonators, which had a, a similar type of a solution um, that they presented for FLL. So it, it's a great job, guys. I know that um, um, we're glad to have this information, and I don't know if, if DPW or, or Mr. Kelly has any update on what the town's approach at this point is. Um, I know it's certainly one of the only solutions in all of FLL that is actually being considered in this way um, so quickly by a community. So great job for alerting the town that, that this might be an option for us. So I'll, I'll see if Mr. Kelly has anything to add at this point. Well, first, I'd just like to thank the kids for, for looking into it because I didn't have an answer for them. When, when uh, they asked, I said, people throw in the garbage, and that's not ideal. So first, thank you very much for doing that. And uh, secondly, the grant application is in. Um, we're waiting on preliminary approval, which should come in about February 1st. And at that time, we're hoping to get into a inter-community agreement, which is, you know, pretty forward thinking for us. We don't really share with other communities. So this is a great opportunity, and we're hoping that it passes. But it's entirely uh, their endeavor. They did a great job. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank Tom. you, Paul. So now when the Chili Fest comes up in the spring, everyone <laughs> uses one pound propane bottles. I uh, was uh, had the honor of being a cook uh, a year ago, uh, two years ago, and I had like four or, four or five of them generated in that one day, uh, times every cook there too. So I think Summers could uh, could uh, get a phone call there and try to get them on board. I think this is a fantastic uh, opportunity for the town of Enfield. Thank you all for the great idea. Paul, I hope, uh, hope we can get the grant too, which would be awesome. Is it a fully funded grant, or would we have to pay a portion? Uh, it's 80-20, and we've actually got Ellington and Summers on board, so they're, oh, they're cool. ready to go. Awesome. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Questions, comments from the council? Ed? Yeah, just a great job, and uh, I, I was really unaware of what to do with those, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Uh, Carol? Just, just ditto, guys. You did an amazing job and uh, great skits, a lot of fun, and fantastic idea. So thank you. 
Thank you, Carol. Any further comments? Joey? Keep thinking. Who knows what you'll solve, solve next? Thank you for your consideration. All right. Well done, and um, as we work our way through the, the grant application and, and the securing of, of, the, uh, of the item, we'll make sure that we keep you apprised. Thank you so much. And we'd love to have you back when it's actually here, up and running, and uh, to see all your hard work, your good work, come to fruition. So thank you very much. Congratulations to you all. All right, next item on our agenda is public communications and petitions. If there's anyone uh, from the audience wishing to address the council, ask that you please raise your hand. And Mrs. Mullen, you, you're first. Come on up. Please, uh, please state your name and address for the record. Please keep your comments to no more than five minutes. Um, we, I do time you, so if you hit the 430 mark, I will uh, ask you to politely wrap up. And uh, as always, we ask that you please, and this is never for you, but we ask uh, if you'll please refrain from the use of personalities. Mrs. Mullen, welcome. Thank you. Maureen Mullen, 1625 King Street. And I remember the first time I heard you make that remark, I thought, they don't even know me. How can they <laughs> say that already? <laughs> well, anyway, today I came to uh, thank five people who came to my home. I hope I haven't left anybody out. Ms. Erdman came, uh, Attorney Robson came, um, Roger O'Brien, Peter Bryanton, Attorney Elston, and did I miss somebody? Okay. They all came down on Friday to look at the site from my home at 1625, looking toward the mound, berm, whatever term we want to use, on the correct property. This is the, my brother always says, now remember to tell the information because there are always new people who are tuning in for the first time. This mound is 270 feet long, 22 feet high on the street end, 34 feet high at the school end, and it has contaminated soil. I shared that map the day that we were having the little tour down there. Um, and I thank you all for coming and, you know, really responding to what was going on. Now I had some pictures that I didn't get a chance to give to um, Attorney Bromson that day. And these are pictures that show the erosion that occurred on the berm mound last spring after the, we had the uh, melting snow and the water pouring down. So I'd like to pass these pictures on so you have it. Because I know according to the agricultural guidelines, you're not supposed to erect um, a mound like this where there's any chance of erosion. And we still haven't gotten to the map that was supposed to show the depth of the cap. So I don't know what the answer to that is. But I did want to point out that I do have the pictures. And if anyone has any other questions or comments, you know, please let me know. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Oh, and I do have one more thing. I have a copy for each of you. I updated um, the information that I passed on to correct last last spring, early summer, of what I wanted. So I have a copy for each each one of you, and it has this month's date on it. I put my initials and today's date on it, so you have that. So I'll pass that along in case there's any question. I don't want any contamination left. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mullen. You're welcome. Public communication? Anyone else? Mr. Tikas? Bob T. Katz. <clears throat> I graduated from the Republic of Enfield. In, I'm in Thompsonville, somewhere. Um, last December, the demographer delivered a projection on the school enrollment to the assistant superintendent, who ordered it without the board's permission spending money without the board had no, has no knowledge to this day except a couple members 
that there is such a document and hasn't made it public. Um, the, other, the other projection was done when they built the high school. That's, that's, nobody seems to have a copy of it. You do, okay. Um, what the superintendent's telling you, the people, the amount of people in Creck from Enfield is, I think is a, a wild exaggeration of what's there. In this new document, it tells you how many are in Creck. And he's making his budget based on getting all, whatever, 800, 900 students back. Well, they're not there. They don't exist. Uh, the last projection, which was done in 2008, said it was going to be 500 more students in the, in the infield school system than there is today, and they're not there. The, uh, also in the parochial schools, the projection that was done uh, there, it's, they're not there. So we're way below, and in population, we're not 47,500, I guess that's on the website, we're probably more like 42,000. So that, that's an exaggeration. So I can understand why you want to have an exaggeration for, the, for future investors want to move to Enfield. I can understand that. But we have to have real numbers, and you have to have real numbers to do the budget. The budget's over-exaggerated. Um, but the biggest thing I want to see is the enrollment projections. Um, and that, that's how you base your budget on. And they, the last time a, a real budget was presented to the town council was 2008-2009. After that, it was just a dream sheet or a wish list, whatever you want to call it. We're not a real budget. And it's about time. Once the town manager accepts what the superintendent gives you, that's, that's the official document. So I suggest that if the town manager or the future town manager reject the school budget and ask them to give them a real budget in the future. So we, we have to get some real numbers. And I heard a wild exaggeration on the surplus this year. I don't know if it's true, but if it's that high, then you over, over gave them last year too much money. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Public communications? Anyone else for public communications? Thank you very much. Um, we will move to counselor communications and petitions. Counselor communications. Donna? I just responded, Bob. Bob, I will get you a copy of that tax season for me. I did find it. I went through my stuff. Um, I did ask. Um, I do believe leadership did ask for that, and I don't know if they've received it yet. Thank you. Joey? Yeah, through the mayor to town manager. Um, the catch basin on Raffia Road, right across from the... Uh, northerly side of the library is plugged and when it was raining this weekend it was flooding right out into the road so we need to get look at that before this next storm and another problem that i seen uh, and i don't know how we fix this problem but other years we had to go back and, and push the corners all the corners going up raffia road when the plows are coming or tucking the the slush onto the sidewalk and uh, it actually made the sidewalk down the end almost impassable you know till the snow melted and you know we got to try to figure out because once you tuck it all into that corner the people can't shovel it out and which creates a hazard so if we could try to figure out how we're going to do that with these corners and you know maybe if, if we do get a lot of snow this weekend you know we may just have to get a loader and and open some of these harder spots up be more proactive Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Counselor Communications? Anyone else? Bill? All right. um, I wanted to start with a, an event uh, info that I got today. Um, I just lost the document, so I'll come back to that. Um, why don't we start with uh, a motion to suspend the rules and move the following items uh, to miscellaneous this evening and potentially proceed to a vote. The items on the agenda are A1 and A2, E, F, G, and H. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councilor Hall to move those items to miscellaneous. Any discussion? 
Sensing none, show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? Unanimous. Um, and the first, um, <laughs> I apologize. There is a um, Fermi uh, Robotics Program. Um, the uh, Buzz team, uh, Team 175, is hosting their um, annual pasta supper to support uh, their team's activities. It's going to be March 3rd. And um, there will be some flyers floating around, but uh, put it on your calendar, March 3rd. It's typically at um, St. Bernard's Hall on Hazard Ave. And I believe tickets are $10 and may be purchased at the door or from any team member. And I do have another announcement uh, for another activity that I'll bring up later in the evening. That's All right, for now. Bill. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, just a, a couple comments, and it's to go along the lines of what uh, Councilor Bosco had <clears throat> mentioned. So. This weekend, they're projecting our first real snowstorm for the winter. Um, besides the, uh, from the public works perspective of being ready operationally, um, if we can fine tune our communication uh, means as well, because we haven't put out a parking ban yet. We haven't done the, the countdown clock for, for sidewalk cleaning. Can we just make sure that we're ready? Unfortunately, the, I think the predictions are not unfortunately, some are six inches, some are saying a heck of a lot more. Um, so if we can be prepared for that. And, um, and then really just two events that are, that are coming up and you can tell when it's winter and you don't get out a lot because um, the, cal the calendar really isn't full between now and our next meeting. Um, but um, we're all familiar with uh, the first readers um, and they have their annual trivia night and it's all the way on Saturday, uh, February 27th at Mount Carmel from 7 to 10. But um, it is their one fundraiser. They just had a first reader ceremony, I believe, last week with 100 plus kids becoming um, first time readers and being recognized for it. Um, so please contact first readers um, if you would like to participate and uh, see if you're smarter than a fifth grader? Is that, that? They're tough questions. And then uh, personally, we'll, we'll plug the 4th of July town celebration. We have our annual uh, winter dinner dance on Saturday, March 5th at the Polish National Home. Um, $25 per person, always uh, a really nice night and a great meal put on by um, by Sasha and his team at uh, Old Country Deli. Banquets. <clears throat> so um, with that, anyone else? Ed. Yeah, I have a couple issues on roads, but uh, I guess we're having a public works meeting, so I'll bring them up then. And uh, I have one more thing. I had the opportunity to uh, visit the uh, owner and manager of All Face that moved here into Enfield uh, down in the UL building. Uh, if you get an opportunity to go down and talk to him, he's a very nice gentleman. Uh, a little upset with our uh, department, planning department, and how things worked out with him. But he's here with 50 employees. Uh, they have a second business that's also uh, solar panels. So the warehouse is full. Uh, if you get an opportunity to go down there, welcome him. Anybody's welcome. He's, he, uh, he said no one uh, showed up. I happen to know because my daughter-in-law uh, works for him, and uh, that's all I wanted to mention. All face. Thank you, Ed. Anyone Jack, else? Jack. Uh, Microphone, Ed. Scavone. Jack Scavone is the name. And he's at the Old King Street facility, King off, Street, at exit the 46. You'll see, yeah, you'll see red uh, mm -hmm. awnings out in the. Okay, in the back of the building. Back of the building. All right. Thank you, Ed. Anyone else? Yeah, I got the other Bill. I did find the other item. I wanted to make sure I got this right. So uh, Fermi Safe Grad Committee has come up with an, um, an interesting uh, fundraising opportunity. Um, they are collecting inkjet and, uh, and laser cartridges um, to raise funds for this year's celebration. And the way this is working is that if you have uh, empty cartridges, you can give them to um, any Fermi student uh, preferably a senior who can bring them into the uh, into the school um, or they can be dropped off directly at Fermi High School there's a collection box 
in the main office and uh, students um, students also have access to uh, to uh, other boxes um, positioned around the school facility and I think staff can also any Fermi staff can collect them and there's a, a separate staff collection box in the teachers room so that's um, that's going to continue um, throughout the winter into the spring and uh, they thank everyone for any support they can give them great thanks Bill anyone else <clears throat> Then we'll move to the town manager report and communications. Lee. Thank you, Scott. T uh, two items quickly uh, related to materials you have at your places. Uh, first of all, you have the uh, annual uh, comprehensive uh, financial report completed by the auditors for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. Consists of a management letter, the financial uh, statements, uh, the federal single audit report and the state single audit report. Uh, we reviewed uh, these briefly with the general government uh, committee last week uh, and we're in the process of scheduling the auditors to come in and talk with all of you uh, in an executive session. We're shooting for the second uh, meeting in February for that. Um, and then secondly, you have uh, materials at your places uh, related to uh, what you accomplished at your first goal setting session, uh, uh, the dot exercise, your priorities that you'll use for the second goal setting session next Monday. Uh, you also have uh, the summary of the municipal fiscal indicators report uh, that I mentioned. And we just got notice today that the latest five year uh, municipal fiscal indicators report is up on OPM's website. So we're going to update that uh, showing FY14 information and we'll, we'll hopefully, hopefully have that for you for next uh, Monday. Uh, and we do have a rough draft of a three-year financial forecast for the town I reviewed this morning with our uh, acting finance director. Um, we wanted to hold off uh, giving that to you until we have our health insurance meeting tomorrow. Uh, we also want to review the information with Board of Education staff since there is a big line item there for education expenses. Uh, and then we hope to give you that either by the end of this week or at the meeting on uh, Monday, the goal setting session on Monday. We'll walk you through that and hopefully that will be helpful to you as you're thinking about your priorities, number one. And number two, any parameters you want to consider giving me as I uh, get into the budget uh, preparation process for next fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Any questions for Lee? Just All right. Thank you for this um, document. And, and I think having the definitions is going to make a world of difference for us. And what, Lee, when you mentioned the latest fiscal updates from OPM, does that include the now projected $500 million deficit? Is that the, the number? Uh, no, that, that's not what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is the, the five-year municipal fiscal this. indicators report. They just okay. added a year of data to it. Okay. So we'll update that and, and give you that either by the end of this week or at the meeting next week. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for Lee? <coughs> Thank you, Lee. Next, town attorney report and communication. Chris? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as assigned, I am progressing on the review of all pending litigation and all pending cases uh, against the town or that the town has brought. Um, I reported on some in this evening's uh, special meeting, and over the next two in February, I think I can bring you up to date on all of the ones uh, that are outstanding. Thank you, Chris. Questions for Chris? Thank you. Uh, reports to special committees of the council, Enfield High School Renovation Building Committee, Donna or Gina. Any updates? No, we have our meeting on Thursday, which we probably unfortunately will miss, but I'm going to try to touch base with Randy, see what we need to. I mean, right now it's it's really hot and heavy. I mean, the 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 A wing is literally taken apart. There's just you know the base almost just skeleton left there, but. You, you can start to see it take shape, and it's really, it's really looking good. Great. Okay. Red? Yes, Donna, maybe you can tell me, has the phone problem been resolved? 
You know, they were working towards it, and I think it was like 90%, but I will ask when I talk to Randy and bring that back to you, Red. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any <coughs> other questions for the Enfield High School Renovation Building Committee? Any other reports of special committees of the council? Just, Carol? Just a quick comment. We did have the uh, general government's meeting, uh, like uh, Lee had referenced, and uh, we had made a request of Chris to come back and report to the entire council on all the pending litigation. So that's what you're getting now. You're getting the updates for that. And with the insurance meeting, I will be attending that tomorrow um, as the liaison uh, because of the huge projected increase of 25%, which is alarming. So uh, our consultant will be there, and uh, I'll update the council once we've had that meeting in, a, in an email, and I'm sure Lee will too, but that's about it. Thank most, you, Carol. Most of, it was in, most of it was in executive session, so. Thanks, Carol. Anyone else? Kathleen? Yeah, I would like to report on some of these boards that I'm a liaison to, but no one ever notified me as to what boards I'm on and when they meet. Um, I gave Red a list of the boards I was interested in being on. I don't know whether or not I'm on them, um, but certainly can't be a liaison if I don't know when they meet or what boards that I am on. So if somebody could tell me that, would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So, so to that leak, um, I know after getting um, the appointments uh, from Red and, and, and from myself submitted uh, an Excel spreadsheet to the manager's office. I thought that went out to the entire group, um, but could you have Deb um, resend that? And then um, especially for the committees that are, or for the agencies that are outside agencies, uh, a letter from, from the manager's office stating um, that these are the liaisons for the next two years with the contact information for the counselor. So I know I've been contacted by a couple, okay. but. How do I know when they meet? That's, I mean. Correct, and, yeah. and they, so like Ed and I, I'm new to the housing authority. And so they, Ed's been a member, but they reached out to me in an email actually to both of us saying, this is when we meet, um, here's our contact information. It was a refresher for Ed. He goes to all the meetings anyways, but it was new information for me. Um, some of them you probably will never hear from because they don't regular, they don't have regular meetings. Okay. Um, but at least if we make the good faith effort to say, because any agency that receives, I think, over $5,000 from the town is required to have a council liaison. Um, okay. So. And oh. I would like to go, but I just don't know. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Anyone else? All right, next item would be old business appointments, town council appointed. Uh, it's items one through uh, 23. We've got two of them starred. Um, is there a motion to remove from the table item seven, clean energy committee? So moved. By Councillor Edgar, second. second by <coughs> Councillor Denny. By a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? Items been removed from the table. Can I have a nomination, please? Sure, I'd like, I'd like to nominate Jamie Cisneros. Second. Motion by Councilor Arnone, seconded by Councilor Sakala for uh, Jaime, Jamie Cisneros. Yeah, I know I was going to get gone on that one today. And, and <laughs> just uh, yeah. for uh, in, uh, the sake of, of uh, how right. it's written here today. I wanted to hear everyone say And, and no, you, yeah. did, you did what I would not. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right. So motion and second, <clears throat> is there a motion to close nominations so by Councillor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Edgar, by a show of hands, all those in favor, those opposed, nominations are closed, any discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Jaime Cisneros. Deputy Mayor Lee. Jaime Cisneros. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Councillor Suzak. Jaime Cisneros. Councillor Arnone. Jaime Cisneros. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor and against, no abstentions. And item 10, Inland Wetland and Watercourse Agency. Is there a motion to remove this so, item from so the moved. table by Councillor Edgar? Second. Second by <coughs> Councillor Arnone. By a show of hands, all those in favor? 
Those uh, opposed, uh, item has been removed from the <coughs> table. Is there a nomination? Yes, Fred? Carol Ann Hall. Carrie Ann Howe, motion by Councillor Edgar, seconded by? Second. Councillor Sakala. Is there a motion to close nominations? Second. By Councillor Hall, seconded by Councillor Suzak. By a show of hands, all those in favor of closing nominations. Those opposed? Nominations are closed. Any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Carrie Ann Howe. Mayor Copen. Carrie Ann Howe. Deputy Mayor Lee. Carrie Ann Howe. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Carrie Ann Howe. Councillor Suzak. Carrie Ann Howe. Councillor Arnone. Carrie Ann Howe. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Carrie Ann Howe. Councillor Denny. Carrie Ann Howe. There's 11 in favor, none against, <coughs> no abstentions. Any other appointments by the council? Next item appointments by the town manager. Any appointments, Lee? None. And then items C, D, E, F, G, H, and I all remain on the table. We move to new business. There is no consent agenda. Under appointments, town council appointed. Uh, we have two that are starred. Um, item number two, library board of trustees. Um, <coughs> may I have a nomination? I would like to nominate Marion Maruka. Motion by Deputy Mayor Lee. Seconded by Councilor Hall. Motion to close nomination. Motion to close by Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councillor Suzak. By a show of hands, all those in favor. Those opposed? Nominations are closed. Any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Marion Maruka. Count Deputy Mayor, I'm sorry, Mayor Copen. Marion Maruka. Deputy Mayor Lee. Marion Maruka. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Marion Maruka. <coughs> Councillor Souza. Marian Maruka. Councillor Arnani. Marian Maruka. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Marian Maruka. Councillor Denny. Marianne Maruka. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. And item number three, Library Board of Trustees. So is, moved. Is there a nomination? Second. Sandra Nucio. By Councillor Edgar, seconded by Councillor Denny for Sandra Nucio. So motion to close so nominations moved. by Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councillor Suzak. By a show of hands, all those in favor? <laughs> those opposed? Nominations are closed. Any discussion? <coughs> Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Sandy Nucio. Mayor Copen. Sandra Nucio. Deputy Mayor Lee. Sandra Nucio. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Sandra Nucio. Councillor Suzak. Sandra Nucio. Councillor Arnone. Sandra Nucio. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Sandra Nucio. Councillor Denny. Sandra Nucio. Just 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any other appointments by the town council? Um, next item would be item E, Capital Region Council of Governments Regional Planning Commission alternate. We have received uh, from the Planning and Zoning Commission their uh, choices to serve on the CROG Regional Planning Commission. So I first need a um, motion to appoint Peter Falk as the alternate. So moved. Second. By Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councillor Suzak. Any discussion? I don't, do I have to close nominations? I don't have to close. It's not, a, it's not even it's ours. Not. Okay. So any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Peter Falk. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Peter Falk. Councillor Suzak. Peter Falk. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Peter Falk. Councillor Denny. Peter Falk. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. And then item F, the reappointment to the Capital Region Council of Governments Regional Planning Commission. Full-time member, Alan Drynan. So moved. Second. By uh, Councillor Edgar, seconded by Councillor Stokes. Any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Abstain. Councillor Stokes. Alan Drynan. Councillor Suzak. Alan Drainen. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. 
Councillor Sakala. Alan Drynan. Councillor Denny. Alan Dryden. There's 10 in favor, none against, one abstention. Next on our agenda is items for discussion and all items have been moved uh, to miscellaneous that we would act upon this evening. Uh, the one item that did not, I'm sorry, the two items that did not move are the appointments town council appointed ethics commission and planning and zoning commission alternate. All other items have moved to miscellaneous, so we'll move to miscellaneous. The first item under miscellaneous is the approval of the consent agenda. <clears throat> is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. By Deputy Mayor Lee. Second. Seconded by Councillor <clears throat> Hall. Discussion? By a show of hands, all those in favor of the consent agenda? Those opposed? One in opposition. Uh, consent agenda is approved. Next item is uh, discussion resolution request for transfer of funds for Family Resource Center, $85,000. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6. Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made to Family Resource Center, Hartford Foundation Grant, FRC. Lego Grant, salaries, 14051 FICA, 862 Medicare, 202 other professional services, 5,000. Printing and reproduction, 1,000. Instructional supplies, 6,825. Food, food related, 2,000. Furniture and fixtures, 8,060. Technology equipment, 2,000. Lego Grant FRC Parent Activities 2000 Instructional Supplies 20000 Other Professional Services 23000 From Family Resource Center Revenue Hartford Foundation FRC Grant $40,000 Lego Grant $45,000 Certified the funds are available John Wilcox Acting Director of Finance So moved by Councilor Arnone Second Seconded by Councilor Denny Discussion just want to acknowledge the um, uh, the generosity of both of those organizations in supporting the uh, FRC program for another year. That's Any other? That's big dollars. <laughs> big dollars. Big commitment. Any other discussion? Sensing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. Councillor Arnone? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Next item discussion resolution request for transfer of funds for development services $34,555. Resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made to development services planning, other professional services. $34,555 from Development Services Code Enforcement, part-time salaries $20,000, administration, full-time salaries $9,555, and administration other supplies $5,000. Certified the funds are available. John Wilcox, Acting Director of Finance. So moved. By Councillor Hall. Second. By Deputy Mayor Lee. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. <coughs> Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution setting a public hearing regarding the proposed changes to the Enfield Town Code, Chapter 22, Article 2, the Cultural Arts Commission. Whereas Chapter 22, Article 2 of the Town Code established a Cultural Arts Commission. And whereas on October 20th, 2014, the Town Council amended the ordinance to update and redefine the Cultural Arts Commission's purpose and responsibilities, but overlooked the name change to the, quote, Enfield Culture and Arts Commission, unquote which more appropriately reflects the Commission's expanded mission within the community. And whereas the Commission seeks to implement the name change ahead of marketing and branding <coughs> campaign with additional amendments to Chapter 22, Article 2. 
And whereas the town council wishes to seek input from the residents of the town of Enfield regarding the proposed amendment. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Tuesday, February 16th, 2016, at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed amendment to the name of the Cultural Arts Commission. So by Second. Councilor Arnone, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lee. Discussion? Tom? Yes, yeah, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, Bill and I uh, both serve on this uh, committee, and, and we did do some extensive uh, changes to their charter, and we just kind of uh, uh, discussed it with the committee in, in separating cultural arts into culture and arts. Just gives a better wide spectrum to what we do and uh, defines the group much better. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I think it'll uh, help us with uh, getting our logos together, getting our word out uh, uh, to the uh, community who we are and what we do. Great. Thanks, Tom. Anyone else? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor and against, no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into an agreement with the Office of Policy and Management Intertown Capital Equipment Purchasing Incentive Program. Resolve that Lee C. Erdman, acting town manager, is authorized to enter into and amend contractual instruments with the Office of Policy and Management Intertown Capital Equipment Purchasing Incentive Program in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield for equipment purchases. So moved. By Deputy Mayor Lee. Second. Seconded by Councilor Anoni. Discussion. This is exactly what we had the presentation from the St. Bernard students on. So this is the council moving forward on that initiative. Any other discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Sarno. Four. Councillor Stokes. Four. Councillor Suzash. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Did I get everyone? Yes. I think so. All right. Yeah. Yes. All right. It. And there's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. If you got 12, we'd be concerned. Well, <laughs> I think everyone up here is going, oh my God, we're going to finish before 8 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that completes miscellaneous, and uh, the filibuster can begin. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? <laughs> Mr. Tikaz. Bob T. Kess. Typically, I, f I forgot a couple of things. But <clears throat> I'll take 10. I started the clock. Uh, I want to tell you a story. My friend in Longmeadow, I asked her stupidly, I said, do you have a senior center? She says, we do not have a senior center in Longmeadow. We have an adult center, and we're the only adult center in the United States. I said, oh, really? She says, and we have 87 millionaires in a town of, with 15,000 people. I said, oh, thank you very much. But anyways, I'm going back to the demographic study. Demographers, and there's only two consultants, and the superintendent of Glastonbury does demography for uh, the town of Glastonbury. But when they project, they project on an optimistic side in case there's a problem. A business moves in, people move in, uh, the parochial schools close, the, pro the, the private schools close. So this study will show a decline in the school enrollment, and that's on the optimistic side. So it's going to be far, going far lower than what the projections sh show. But one of the school board members did a study of the capacity of all the, s the seven elementary schools, and he come up with a number. And that's based by a state statute on the square feet, like a high school in 1990 was 180 square feet per student. Uh, his, 
his uh, numbers come up were got 700 empty seats in the elementary schools. So we're over capacity. Now what, what the superintendents in the past have done, they've made some storage rooms out of classrooms, they made offices. So typically those are still classrooms, but they dummied it up to say we are tight on space. Now, as far as what's happening in school enrollments across the state, 150 towns out of 169 towns are losing school enrollment. Population has declined. The projections have, are going down. So um, it's not because of the, the taxes or the, uh, the, uh, or, or the climate. Uh, men and women are having less children today. They're very mobile. They don't want to buy. A town like Rocky Hill, which has high apartments, is actually growing because of the young people that are moving into apartments. They do not want to buy a home today. They don't want to be pinned down because they want to move, move where the jobs are. So that's really what's happening. So the, when you see the, the projections, it's downward projection, and that's optimistic. So just to let you know, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Public communications, anyone else? Any counselor communications? No counselor communications, so I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. By Councilor Hall, seconded by Councilor Suzak. By a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, we are adjourned. Have a good evening. Stay warm.